people with drones, their support infrastructure and potential targets. Also beyond and around Earth, taking in cosmological time, including speculation, speculative forecasts of the future. What anomalies become evident? What do you, you and I, witness when we fly an imagination into cosmic reaches? I call this kind of expanded oversight imaginational metavalence. My interest in the idea of metavalence was inspired by computer scientist and father of wearable computing, Steve Mann's work on surveillance, surveillance, and metavalence. However, while Mann experiments with digital cyber and electronic platforms to expose the telltale signals and signs of surveillance technology, I use the analog medium of painting to expose, examine, and critique these platforms and their utilization for military, policing, and security activities. This slide here is a little bit like uh, Kate's um, laser show, but are you flying above or below it? For me, using an analog medium in the age of increasingly autonomous systems, drone, cyber, gray zone, and hybrid welfare is an act of defiance. One where technical independence from the system does not preclude an ability to critique it. As a practitioner, the hands-on application of paint to form and create paintings of militarized technology is a way of knowing, of building knowledge, even a strangely intimate knowledge, achieved without leaving a digital trace that can be fed back into the system. It is a defiance of what I call the scopophilic necrointimacy of sensors and imaging technology designed to track and target. As I work, I ask, what literal and metaphoric horizons have we crossed, are we crossing, and will we cross that might, as Martin Rees fears, pose even a small threat of catastrophic downside? I propose that imaginational metavalence can be a form of witnessing, even a form of meta-witnessing, witnessing the witnessing, a way to see the invisible, to see the invisible and the visible together in ways that expose relationships. For example, a drone support infrastructure can be tangible and visible, including assets such as satellites and ground control stations. A drone's targets might include buildings, human beings, and the devices humans use. However, what about a drone's invisible support infrastructure? For example, the invisible signals carried at light speed by radio and microwave frequencies in the electromagnetic spectrum. These operatively enable hardware and systems surveillance, target, and, and attack. Without signals, military and civilian hardware and system operability and interoperability would be severely compromised. Additionally, while radio and microwave frequencies are used to operatively enable activities such as communications, data transmission, remote operation and delivery of instructions, signals are also targets and perpetrators of electronic and electromagnetic warfare, jamming, hacking, service denial, etc. <clears throat> Recent moves by militaries around the world highlight the increasing significance of the electromagnetic spectrum. For instance, the US Department of Defense's May 2020 Joint Electromagnetic Spectrum Operations Publication considers the electromagnetic spectrum, along with physical domains and cyberspace, as what they call a maneuver space, pivotal for the achievement of, quote, tactical, operational, and strategic advantage, unquote. This is reiterated in the Department of Defense's October 2020 Electromagnetic Spectrum Superiority Strategy. And here in Australia, the Department of Defense's 2020 Force Structure Plan details electronic and electromagnetic strategies, including deference to space assets. Is the landscape rendered lethal by invisible force multiplying capabilities in the maneuver space of the electromagnetic spectrum? This painting and the next one speak to this question. As background, radio frequency bandwidth is becoming congested and militaries are moving towards high energy lasers to transmit data and communications. They are utilizing AI to optimize bandwidth use and they are developing AI machine learning systems for onboard autonomous analysis of data to track, identify and nominate targets. For example, on a drone, onboard autonomous analysis would reduce bandwidth normally required for remote analysis, analysis and communication. Signal and bandwidth use, optimization and conservation are clearly important for strength or force multipliers, but they also carry vulnerabilities. What kinds of insights or witnessing occurs when normally invisible signals are made visible in paintings where you are invited to fly? 
I propose that as signals are mapped, connectivity and interconnectivity are revealed as forces that propel an insidious techno-colonization of environment, extending volumetrically from land to orbiting satellites. I think of this kind of mapping as a, a counter-cartographic exercise, not to contest historical colonizations and empire building, but a mapping of signal occupations that herald future modes of techno empire, where a burgeoning high tech arms race ensures an anxiety that fuels ongoing defense markets. Mapping connections between hardware reveals how relationships between military, political and industrial entities help to blur the lines between military, policing and security activities. This is evidenced in the way police and security force uniforms have become more military-like, but it is also evident in the digital and cyber surveillance, tracking and attack platforms that are shared or shareable, whether it's deliberate or not. Militarizability of civilian technology, I argue, is a key component of contemporary militarization. That our mobile phones, computers, motor vehicle GPS, and anything connected to the Internet of Things can assist in tracking, identification, and nomination of targets demands our attention. Here, Mark Andreevich's ideas of societal dronification draw attention to the dire fact that identification and targeting are macabre euphemisms for advertiser, government, and corporate actions to generate business and or compliance. However, potential lethal tracking, identification, nomination, and attack by state and non-state militarized organizations is exemplified by, for example, signature and personality strikes. In this painting, a drone uh, loiters above a kill box, housing a tree of life. As the world becomes more connected, imaginational metavalence triggers questions about witnessing, even problematizing it, perhaps as a form of complicity. Here I draw upon the notion of theatre of war. Clausewitz often mentions theatre of war in his famous tome on war, stating that it is a, quote, portion of the space over which war prevails as has its boundaries protected and thus possesses a kind of independence. Using a cosmic perspective and imaginational metavalence, the contemporary theatre of war is now clearly performed as Derek Gregory's notion of the everywhere war suggests in multiple domains, geographic, cyber and space, where boundaries are blurred or non-existent. I argue, however, with defence and military future of war rhetoric, preemptively strategizing the future with plans for accelerated warfare assisted by light speed technology, that Gregory's idea of the everywhere war must now include the future and time. In this painting, Theatre of War, I have painted an array of civilian and military drones hovering together, the militarised and the militarizable. The gathering of drones could be an audience, their imaging technology bearing some kind of witness, but the drones are also performers on the everywhere stage of contemporary war. As we fly in imagination above, beyond and into this theatre of war, what parts or parts do we realise we might play? Witness, audience, victim, unwitting accomplice. I end my presentation with my painting called Wingman, which depicts a surveillance night green, um, vision green, loyal wingman drone on the bottom left. This drone described as a game changer is a joint Australian Defence Force and Boeing collaborative project. It will be Australia's first military aircraft in over 50 years and will be exportable. I have also painted Australia's Parliament House, two civilian drones hovering in the sky above it. Parliament House is suspended in space as if it is also an aircraft possibly the manned system the wingman supports. I have also painted a satellite, again in shades of green, and a pale blue dot acts as a sentinel, a reminder to cherish this pale blue dot in the cosmos. All of these elements hover in cosmic space, but can you see that invisible signals and politics link them all? Thank you.